Burns going down, baby. Burns going down. And you know what else burns going down? My Komodo. Because I haven't touched it in months. Because I bought this... I hate to say it. I bought this R5 Mark II. And I stopped shooting on cool cameras. All right? Sorry. I'm tired of my hard drives filling up. All right? I'm also tired of our sponsor. Just kidding. There's not one. But I didn't fill up my coffee cup all the way. So I'll be right back. Let me give you some backstory on why this is kind of a switch up for me. I'm a DP. I work largely in television, episodic television. So typically we're shooting on red. Sometimes we're shooting very cam. Sometimes we're shooting FX9. But typically we're shooting on larger camera packages, cinema cameras, which makes sense for that thing. It's like a, it's the right tool for the job. But I also pick up a lot of random retainer clients to make myself comfortable. It's nice. You should try it. (laughs) And they're social media and they want vertical, horizontal, stills. They want video. They want all these different things. And I, oh man, if I ever have to bring a seven inch monitor to a social media shoot again, it might be the end. So I've shot on this camera for two months now. I've done about $15,000 worth of work using only this camera. But I'm going to tell you from a cinematographer's perspective, shot four seasons of television this year i've shot multiple commercials i've shot a few narrative things why i bought mirrorless camera and why i haven't touched my komodo in like two months let's get into it pros and cons okay my number one pro is the codec xfavc 10 bit 422 incredible i can shoot for an hour and 42 minutes on a 128 card that i got on sale on bnh You can hand off this footage to a client. They can view it in their finder. All these things that just make the turnaround time a little bit quicker on these things. And that's what I'm using this camera for. It's for quick turnaround. It's for lower budget things. It's for maybe we're doing photo and video on the same day. This camera is incredible and the codec matches up perfectly. I haven't seen C-Log2 break down 10 bit. You can do 12 bit raw on this camera in 8K. The codec is incredible, especially coming from only being able to shoot R3D or ProRes. ProRes is a great codec but it's extremely large for what you're getting out of it, especially with the introduction of ELQ on the Komodo. You don't really use ProRes, so it's all R3D. R3D is a great codec. Do you need it for everything? Absolutely not. So this gives me a nice nice little middle of the ground codec. I just need 10 bit, film a YouTube video. I'm doing a little interview, talking head, some social media stuff. This thing kills it. My second pro is sensor size. I kind of forgot how nice full frame was, to be completely real with you. After shooting Super 35 on the Komodo and Super 35 on the C70 for so long, I kind of forgot. Now, honestly, I do use the speed booster on the Komodo or the C70 a lot, but man, there's something about uh, the low light performance of a full frame sensor that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. Also, another pro just right there, low light. This thing crushes at low light. 3200 ISO, no problem. 12,800, it's okay, it's not great. I don't know how many tests to back this thing up for you, but coming from something like the Komodo, this thing is a game changer. It's not a Sony. It's not gonna do the dual base ISO, but this thing does crush it uh, in the low light. Like right now we're shooting at 1600 ISO. No grain, super easy to deal with. I'm actually gonna add grain on top of it, I promise. Another incredible thing, frame rates. When you're coming from something like the Komodo, being able to just shoot 60, 120, whatever, whatever you want. It's so nice. What I use, again, what I use this camera for is the social media jobs, the fashion gigs where they want photo and video at the same time. You can just swap over, do a little event coverage in 120, call it a day. This is a, this is a ease of life, quality of life camera for me. And for, I bet a lot of cinematographers out there that are like, oh man, I'm so tired of taking a social media job on my Komodo or my Raptor or my Alexa Mini. I just want something easy. This is a huge quality of life upgrade for those small jobs and it looks incredible. The last thing I feel like I wanna to touch on is image quality. Cause I was, I was skeptical of image quality on a mirrorless camera. Coming from the Komodo, it has incredible image quality. Shot on this thing for the first time, no problem. Then I was like, okay, well it's gonna break down in color. Started coloring it, zero breakdown. In fact, it was so nice to color because of the low light capability that it's I'm not getting a ton of grain when I start to, oh man, I need to push this, or I need to do whatever, nothing. It's incredible to color and so easy. There's no color rendition problems. There's no like 
green magenta shift. There's no weird stuff going on. No, what do they call it? Pollution. None of it. It's so easy to grade. In fact, I have a power grade that I'm working on right now on this talking head. So I'll do a little swipe thing. But I have three power grades I've put together for C Log 2. So that's C70, C80, C400, C300. Check it out. If you want to buy it, links in the bio. But it's just been so easy to color grade this thing. And I could just drop a power grade on, be done with the project. No coloring. So nice. Okay, now let's let's really get into it here. The cons. Number one, we're just gonna come out swinging client perception. You pull up with a red, it doesn't matter what the job is. Some person on set's gonna be like, oh my gosh, is that a red? And you're gonna be like, yeah, it is. If you pull up with a little, a little guy like this, people are not gonna be like, wow, what an incredible camera. You must be so professional. Good news is, is that the camera's gonna, it's gonna work for you. It's gonna do incredible work and they're gonna hire you back because your work looks great but you're not gonna get the client wow factor that in some way we all desire. Don't, don't lie to yourself. I just wanna make very clear, don't buy a camera because of client perception. One very easy way to be stupid with your money. Don't do that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> it does feel kinda nice. Okay, another con is rigging. This thing, it's not built for rigging. I know you've all seen the R5C shoulder rigs with like a RS3 sticking out the top on a shoulder and you're like, what, As it, that, that defeats the purpose? I know you've seen it, but it's just not built for rigging. That's something that Komodo's better at, okay? It's a different tool for a different job. If you start putting a V-mount on this thing, you're kind of defeating the purpose of being able to have a hybrid camera. Honestly, the fact that after having it for two months, shooting $15,000 worth of work on it, that I have two cons is crazy. At the end here, I want to put an honorable mention. It's a pro and a con, the new battery. If you had an, an R5, you gotta get the new battery. All like it blacks out a bunch of options if you don't have the new battery. They're kind of expensive, they're 70 bucks a pop. I have four of them, but they last way longer. And you know, 70 bucks a battery isn't that bad, especially if you're coming from V mounts, right? If you're spending 200 to $300 on a battery going to 70, not bad. So it's a pro and a con, new battery, but they're better. There you go. Let me, just, let me just close out, no technical aspect. This camera is incredible. I've been shooting on RED for forever. I've shot every camera under the sun. This thing is so easy. And the reality is a lot of us have jobs that aren't the big sexy jobs where you have an AC and you have a Genie crew, et cetera, where you need a larger camera. If you're doing any hybrid jobs at all, I think the best camera on the market. You're getting C-Log 2, you're getting incredible stills, and you have a viewfinder still, unlike the FX3. You have a full-size HDMI port. I think this thing absolutely kills the hybrid market. So if you're looking for something like that, even a camera to go travel with, it's a little large. But if you're okay with traveling with a full-size camera, then this thing is incredible. And if you're trying to do more hybrid work, especially in the slow times, if it's December and you're slow right now, and you can go pick up a few social media jobs in town for a few grand, this camera is gonna kill it. And you don't have to take your huge rig with a seven inch monitor. No way. Just pick up one of these. It's great. I, I, haven't, I haven't found anything wrong with it. Made it to the end. Thank you very much. I hope this video was helpful. I've had such a great time filming on this camera. It has made my life easier. So I hope you can see that reflected in the video. I only really have good things to say about this camera. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. See you in the next one. Peace.